Welcome back everyone. I'm Jason and you're watching Jason Jensen Trains. Well, I just released my second HO scale kit. Uh, let me show you some pictures of it quick. All right, well, as you can see, this is gonna be a fun build. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to build that kit. Hey, if you like the videos that I produce, the easiest way to support the channel is to simply click subscribe. So take a moment and subscribe to the channel. Oh, and real quick, I wanna mention that on this new kit, I want to offer free shipping to my Patreons at the second and third tier level. Uh, so be sure to check my Patreon page and uh, I'll have a coupon again for the second and third tier levels. All right, well, let's get building this. All right, first, let's go over all the walls that come in the kit. You have four walls here that are all the same height. You then have this large wall that gets two garage doors put in it. You then have these two end walls and this little wall and there's another thin piece and note that it's the same height as that. So don't confuse that little thin piece with these two thin pieces. They are they are the same height. <laughs> so <laughs> but this one is the thinnest, and these two are the same width. So just be sure not to confuse uh, those thin pieces. All right, now let's start to brace the back of the walls. And we're using eighth inch square strip wood. And it's marked with red on the end. Now on this piece, we're going to mark where the bracing goes. So we're going to take our end walls. Let's use this one right here. We're going to place it next to it. Making sure that the bottom is level. Then we're going to put a mark right at the top. And we're going to do the same on this side. Make sure that the bottom is level. And put a mark right at the top. Now when we brace this, we don't want our bracing to go any higher than that pencil line. And we're going to cut three of these. So we'll glue that all the way to the edge. Glue that one all the way to the edge. And center this one right there. And let's put one more right here. Okay, we'll set that to the side. And let's work on our sidewalls. Now it's important on this sidewall here, on the low end, you can see it goes at an angle. On the back end here, we're gonna put it all the way to the edge. Now on this one here, we'll just take a scrap piece or we can actually take one off of here, set it there because we wanna go in the thickness of one of those. So it's an eighth of an inch in. So we'll do the same on this. So when we glue that, we want to come in an eighth of an inch from the edge. Now this one. So I'm going all the way to the edge with these. And this will all be in the instructions. Uh, I'll have a diagram showing you where to place all these. That one we can actually just 
center it. We'll center that one. In this one, we have to come in an eighth of an inch on both ends. Um, this one will go all the way to the edge. And then this one, we want to leave an eighth of an inch to allow for that one. Okay, now we can get these all glued in place. Now we need to brace our back wall. And it's important to find out which side is the front. And let me show you how to do that. We'll take this. This goes over the top of it. And you want to make sure that that window opening is in the center, that there's nothing going over it. I'll show you the wrong way. Uh, let's see. There. You can see where you don't want that. <laughs> so, it'll fit over it just like that so this is our front and this is the back and we'll write back now let's see we'll probably do eh, maybe five i want these to be pretty close to the exact height of the wall I say that because it'll help support the roof card. Now I'll glue these onto the back. Now on the ends, you want to come in an eighth of an inch to allow for the bracing that we put on our end walls to fit in there. So you'll come in an eighth of an inch on each end. And then you can put these wherever you want. Okay, the bracing is all done. Next, we're going to stain all of the walls and all the rest of the strip wood that comes in the kit. You have a wide, flat piece. You have your corner trim. You should have two. They are marked with green on the end. And two thin pieces that are marked with blue on the end. So we'll stain all of these and all of our walls. In this, I'm going to spray paint the front of it probably um, a black or a very dark gray. Well, I spray painted the front of this wall black. And now we're gonna stain our wood. And I'm gonna use a new color, Ocean Depths. And this is from besttrains.com so you want to shake it really good first I'm going to take all of my strip wood and put it right in the bottle now it's too long so you have to do both ends and then just make sure you separate them all okay and then we'll set that to the side to dry I wanted to point out that I put some weights on my walls while they're drying. But if you do a really thin coat, um, you shouldn't have a problem with warping. Uh, but I did go a little bit heavy, as you could see. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> I know better. Uh, so they were starting to curl slightly. So I just put some weights on them. But again, just do a thin coat. And if you want it darker, let it dry and apply another thin coat. Okay, the walls are close to being dry. Um, now, I wanna go over a little bit and talk about warping. Um, I did put weights on them. Uh, this wall, you can see, it's slightly twisted. It's not much, hardly noticeable. And the top, because the bracing doesn't go all the way to the top, it tended, 
it tended to curl in a little bit not much not much so just simply bend it don't do it too much and don't go in between your your thumbs you're bending it right in between your thumbs so you have a tight grip on both sides if you grab it down here and grab it here and bend it it'll snap somewhere in here so always put your thumbs together and bend it like that slightly twist it and it's good again if you put thin layers of stain on it um, you're not going to have a problem same with this piece slightly bowed over a little bit very very gently bend it back you'll see warping when the stain is wet and people will panic and start to try to bend it and they end up breaking it let it dry let it dry sometimes it straightens out all by itself it'll look really warped when it's wet and um, when that stain is completely dry it may flatten back out again and you can just simply um, put books on your walls while they dry if you want some type of weight so okay that's all i want to say about that <laughs> let's get on to painting the walls we're going to do an off white and we're going to do a peeled paint effect Okay, so the walls were all done and the strip wood, I laid it out on my paper towel and took a sponge and sponged all of the strip wood. So I've decided to put a stripe across the bottom of the walls. So I put down some tape, sticky side up. I just curled the ends and stuck it down. Now, We'll paint, we'll mask off where we want our stripe to be. And I think I'm going to go, let's see, one, two, three, six clapboards, six clapboards up. Now I want to paint it a very dark gray and I'm using this. Now you can mix your own, uh, you can do whatever color you want to. I just want mine to be a very dark gray. I think I may try sponging it. I'll do both, sponge it and brush it. So I just took some black, just straight black, but it is flat. Both of these are flat paint and mixed a little bit of the two together and just did some dry brushing over it okay let's see what this looks like now i want to put an orange a thin orange stripe on this so it'll go from the dark gray to a white board an orange board then the rest of the boards up will be white. So let's try to mask that. 
So again, we're going up one board. We're going to tape over one. We're going to leave one board white right above the dark gray. Now we're going to take pumpkin and we're going to mix a little bit of burnt orange with it. Now we'll take some iced coffee. I'm just using the sponge very lightly. Next, we're going to glue the walls together. And let's start with our back wall, the front wall and the two end walls. So there's the back wall and the two ends. And then this gets glued like this. And I'll show you up close, but that goes to that corner, that top corner right there. So you have some that sticks out right there on the side. All right, let's get this glued together. Now is the time if, say this is slightly bowed, just bend it the opposite direction. Not too much, just a little bit, just to kind of straighten it. I cut these at a slight angle. I don't know if you can see that. It's a slight angle to match um, Yeah, this corner here gave me a little bit of a problem, so I'm just putting some super glue on it. Okay, I'm just going to hold it for a second. Okay, first let's glue on our thin wall and make sure it's the thinnest one of the thin walls. I know it's kind of overkill using the super glue, but I've got it out and it's handy, so I'll just use it. Make sure that it's square, line it up on your grid. You may have noticed I got a new mat and uh, got this off of Amazon and I'll put a link in the description below um, so that you can just click on the link and get the same mat. Hold it for a second until it sets up. Make sure everything is square. Next, we're going to add our uh, corner trim. Make sure you have the right pieces. They're square and they should have green on the end. We'll start in this corner and it goes all the way to the top. We want to test fit it before we glue it and make sure that it's level because this board goes on the top and you want to make sure there's no gap in between there. I almost broke the top of that off. Oh man, I'll show you quick. We'll put some glue in there and glue that. Okay, let's take our knife okay that is it next let's put this together 
Now it's important that right next to the door you put uh, it's almost square that one goes there again line it up on your grid to make sure it's square well I've made a mistake with the bracing this bracing should have went all the way to the edge let's see if this one works yeah this one's fine let's glue this one on I'll show you in a second the uh, mistake that I made so that you don't make the same one again line it up on your grid so that it's perfectly square okay now this one there's an eighth of an inch spacing between the edge to the brace so I simply need to cut this brace off and move it out so we'll move it all the way to the edge I'll make sure in the instructions and the diagram that I show the correct way to do this just let that dry for a few seconds sets up pretty quick So these two sides are exactly the same, same measurements. Now that will go right like that. But I don't want to glue it yet uh, because I want to get uh, something glued on the back first. We'll get this painted and glued on the back. Then we'll know exactly where to put that. Okay, let's go ahead and paint this. We're gonna use iced coffee and <coughs> a sponge. Now it's delicate, so you wanna be careful when you're cutting this out. Now let's Now this gets glued just like that. Well, here we are so far. Now if you wanted to paint your corner trim to match the wall and do black and then put a little orange stripe on it, you could. I'm going to leave mine white. I have all the window frames and door frames and I simply put a, I just quick brushed over a uh, bittersweet chocolate. It's not a solid coat, um, it's just real light, um, just to sort of give it a wood grain look. Now we'll take our light buttermilk and sponge it on. All of the trim is glued on around the windows and the doors. And I take the time to, after everything's glued in place, I take my paintbrush with white paint and paint the inside of the frame a solid white. Um, I'll show you. I haven't done the, the door yet back here. I don't know if you can see the edge of it. But you can see it's the dark wood and you can see the clapboard. So now what I do is I take my paint and I do a pretty thick coat. to fill in the gap between the trim and the clapboard siding. 
Let me paint this quick and then I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so hopefully you can see that now on the inside of that door. See how it's solid? Now we're going to have the uh, tar paper run up the back of this to cover that. So all we're going to do is put that up against this <laughs> and grab my pencil, which I cannot find. Now we can do some weathering on it. Okay, so I've gotten all of my doors and windows glued in. And they're all painted black. And then on the front door here, I did some dry brushing with iced coffee. And I also did some weathering on the roof. So I first took some sandpaper and sanded going in one direction. Then I took some light gray and just dry brushed over it. Now, one door, we're going to glue it so that it's partially open. And the other door will have it closed. Okay, let's test fit it. Okay, it fits pretty snug. Now for the open door, there are prescribed lines in the door. And I took my blade and went over this one and this one so that they bend more. I then did the same with this. And like I said, there's already lines in it. So you'll see the lines. And then if you just drag your blade over those lines, you can really bend it. So we'll glue it in place just like that. Now, let's glue on our trim that goes across the top. Let's paint our base. We're using slate gray and some chalk paint called Cocoon. Okay, let's dirty it up a little bit. We're going to use pigment called winter soil okay now we'll take 
uh, Farm Dark Earth. Now we'll take Fresh Engine Oil. I'm going to shake this a little bit. Now that's an enamel, so I need to get my thinner. Okay, this is odorless thinner. with some farm dark earth. Okay, let's take a break from the structure and paint our detail castings. We have a chimney, a roof vent, six barrels, and a cluster of details. That has a lot, a lot of detail. As you can see, I put a primer on it, and now we'll start to add some color. So it was a late night, and uh, I got all the details painted, and I also rusted all the signs and got those put on. Now we need to add some trim. We'll put trim on the front here and then on the sides and then we'll put some trim around the back here. So the trim is on have to be very careful when handling it, especially with the windows that are glued open. You don't want to snap those off. Now let's go around this little structure right here. It's a little pop out. We are almost done with this. We have a vent that we're going to rust and glue on the back. Probably right, right there. Then we have a little smokestack that we're going to add. We'll probably cut this in half and add it there or possibly even over here i'm thinking maybe over here the vent is done and put on now let's put this pipe right here so we're just gonna make a hole and i'll use super glue and glue it in place and then after it's completely dry I'll paint it. It'll be easier to paint it while it's in place than trying to handle it. Okay let's build our sign for the roof. And we're going to start with this piece right here. You'll see there's a, a dark side and a light side. So put the dark side down. And I'm just using it. And on the far side, we're going to put glue all the way down. Then we're going to take one of these and 
and you want to make sure that it's straight and it's lined up perfectly with the top. And again, this is right in the center and we're lining it up with the top. Okay, one more. <laughs> I glued it on. I glued it on wrong. I glued the long side to it. The long side is the back. So that's what it should look like. Now we're going to take this one and you want to apply the glue on the lighter side, not the darker side. And we're just going to do down the center and down each side. And I lined mine up with those straight pieces that go across. All right now, very gently set that to the side, let it dry. And now we're going to work on the sign. Here is the first layer of the sign. Now I sprayed the back of mine with a gray primer. And that's all I'm going to do to it. I may add some rust to it. You'll notice on the front of this, there is a curved line. There's an oval there. That oval gets painted orange and this big oval is painted black. And this rectangle here is painted orange. I'll draw on there so that you can see it better. So orange, orange rectangle and the center part is black. We'll start with the orange and again like everything else we're using pumpkin. This is what I used on the um, oil drums and the trim and if you want to dark if it's a little too bright for you you can always add burnt orange to it. You want to be very careful and stay inside that line. Uh, I guess we didn't really need the burnt orange. Okay, for the center, we're using dark gray again. This paint is from Archive X. This may take a couple coats. You want to go in one direction. Make it as smooth as you can. Now we're going to take bittersweet chocolate and a sponge. And then we're going to take a dark brown marker and go over the edges. Now if you want to, you can add some rust to the back. Now we're going to paint this. This is so exciting for me because I actually designed the sign first and then built the structure around it. And I have no idea what this is going to look like. Okay, we'll let this dry. Okay, now we're going to use burnt sienna. We're going to add some rust to this. I'm just tearing off a little bit of our sponge and I'm going to use my tweezers and we can even add some of this 
on here. So I just sprayed a gray primer on this. Now we're going to add some rust. Now let's glue this to our sign. I feel like maybe I should almost use super glue on this, but I'll paint this glue once it dries to look like black tar. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you'd like to order the kit we built today, please visit jasonjensentrains.com. All right, well, thank you all so much for the support. I truly, truly appreciate it. You guys are the best. Again, please take a moment and subscribe to the channel. And a big thank you to all of my Patreons. You guys are incredible. All right, well, until next time, Stay motivated and happy modeling, everyone.